Am I the a-hole for not babysitting for my parents? For a bit of background, my parents have five children, of which I am the oldest. There's an eight-year age gap between me and my oldest brother, and they started popping my siblings out pretty frequently after he was born. My youngest sister is six. My childhood and teen years were spent taking care of my siblings. I never went out with friends or dated cute boys because I was always too busy doing dinner, bed and bath time for four children. When I got older, I signed permission slips and attended recitals in plays like a parent should. When I turned 18, I was made the official emergency contact. Even now, the youngest two call me mommy sometimes. About a year ago, my parents told us that they were expecting another baby. I was 21 and had moved out, but I was staying at my parents' house to take care for my siblings during lockdown while my parents worked their essential jobs. This is pretty horrible, but I wasn't happy for them. I made it clear that I had no desire to raise any more children for them. I told them explicitly that they were not to ask me for anything concerning this child because I was ready to start living my life. This past month, they have begun to call me on my days off and asking me if I could watch my new brother because they want to have nights off. I have declined every time. This weekend, when they called and asked, I hung up the phone. My family's pissed and they keep sending angry texts and messages, saying that I'm being selfish and that I took it too far. I still don't feel bad, but I need to know. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I have been told by friends and family members to just cut off my family and go on with my life. A few comments have shared a similar sentiment. I would just like to say that this is very difficult for me. I'm having a hard time going from seeing these children 24-7 to not have seen them in months. As a sister and their former primary caregiver, this is painful for me. I'm definitely not ready to move out of town or go no contact. Now for the top comments. Not day hole. What they're doing is called parentification. It's a form of child mistreatment. They are the ones being selfish. They brought another child into the world, so it's their responsibility to parent. You made it perfectly clear where your boundaries are. Stand firm and enjoy your life. This is exactly right. The A-Halls are Opie's parents. Opie's not the selfish one. Their parents are and they took it too far having children that they can't seem to be bothered to actually be parents to. If they want nights off, they can take turns at being the parent for a change. It is definitely not Opie's responsibility. It almost looks like they have a pregnancy fetish and then become disinterested in the human being that results. Not a day haul. Not your kids, not your responsibility. They made a choice to have yet another baby and said baby is 100% their responsibility. You owe them nothing. Go and live your life. In my mind, I know that they aren't my children, but I can't help but feel like I'm turning my back on them. Kids are obviously their parents' responsibility, but at this point, I'm sure the youngest are confused about who their parents are. I'm trying to live my best life in my 20s, but the guilt is overwhelming sometimes. Not today, Hull. You were an abused child, forced to parent. Your parents and family are horrible to try to guilt you. Congratulations for standing up for yourself. A few people have used the word mistreatment in their replies. I have to say that aside from the obvious, I had everything I needed growing up. My parents never laid a hand on me. I agree that they weren't great, but I wouldn't go so far as to say I was mistreated. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hall for not staying with my mother because of my future stepbrother? Hi Reddit. I'm really conflicted right now because I feel like a prick, but I also don't think I'm entirely unjustified here. My 17 male, mother's 38 female, fiancé Larry, 40 male, moved in with her three months ago. They were dating for three years prior to the engagement, but I had not met him before, although he seems nice enough. Larry has children from his previous relationship. Jesse, 14 female, Kelly, 14 female, and Sam, 10 male. Sam has Asperger's and severe sensory issues. As my mother lives in a three-bed bungalow, the twins have been given the spare bedroom, and Sam has been given what was once my room as I only visit on the weekends. For the first weekend after they moved in, I had to share a room with Sam, but he needs to listen to music to sleep and will not wear headphones as he cannot stand the weight of them. He apparently struggled to sleep listening to me turn on a blow-up mattress, so since then I've had to sleep in the living room with the dogs, who start barking at 6am. 
There are no curtains in the living room, so the street lamps outside shine onto my face. It is next to the twins' bedroom, who are always playing music until 2 to 3 a.m. I also have to be up by 7.30 so Sam can watch cartoons with his breakfast, or else he throws a tantrum. We all basically live by Sam's schedule, and I no longer have fun weekend outings to the beach or the arcade with my mother, as Sam doesn't like spontaneity. I know it's hard for everyone, but it's been three months, and it's not getting any easier and I'm exhausted by Monday after barely sleeping every weekend. As I'm over 16, my parents have always allowed me to decide how often I spend with each of them, and I've requested to not stay over at my mother's anymore as I'd prefer my bedroom at my father's to the blow-up mattress in her living room. My mother was clearly hurt by this and taken aback, apparently unaware that I hated the arrangement so much. I have no wish of visiting on Saturday so I still see her, but I do not wish to sleep over. My mother has been trying to convince me to change my mind and not to throw our relationship away over one hurdle. I don't want her to feel as if I'm punishing her for something that isn't her or Larry's fault, or Sam's for that matter, but I also don't think I'm completely unjustified here, as nobody seems to be taking my feelings into account or how I would be affected by sacrificing my room, even if I'm only there two days a week. Am I the a-hole here, Reddit? Not an a-hole. It's not Sam's fault, so he's not an a-hole. But neither are you. The home is not large enough or laid out properly to accommodate the people living in it, and that's just how it is. You have every right to your sleep and comfort in a place that's supposed to be your home, just as Sam does. You haven't asked him to modify any of his behavior. You're adopting to what works for you. Your mom is an a-hole for guilting you into staying. You still come see her and visit. You just leave for sleeping, and honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I wouldn't call Sam an a-hole, and I'm trying not to resent him or Larry over it. It's no one's fault. It's just frustrating. Basically, yeah, there's not enough room to accommodate everyone. I don't know anything about their mother, but I'm perfectly capable of just staying with my father, which seems to be the obvious solution. It's definitely the fault of the adults in this situation, namely your mother and stepfather. Agree. They literally put zero thought to the new living arrangement effect on Opie. Yeah, they seemed to assume slash hope Sam and I could just share a room and had no backup plan for what happened if that didn't work out. I seem to be more of an afterthought than anything else. Not today, Hull. You're not throwing your relationship away. You're trying to compromise by at least visiting but not sleeping over. Sleep is important, and you clearly can't get that at her place. It's not her fault but there needs to be a workaround. I don't understand why she saw it as completely throwing our relationship away either, but it's become unbearable to sleep at her house. Yeah, it's not her fault, but I can't see any other solution right now. It also highlights her failure to take care of you. That she didn't see all of this as difficult on you shows her deliberate blinders. Yeah, I had actually mentioned my concerns to her a month ago, and she encouraged me to give it another try. So how she was apparently unaware of my concerns, I don't know. Next story. Am I the a-hole for blowing up on my dad because of his blatant favoritism? So, I have a brother, male 17, who is on a school basketball team and admittedly plays really well. He is in many ways like my dad, male 53, who also used to play basketball and has a love for the sport. I-15 male, on the other hand, do ice skating three times a week in an amateur organization completely funded by my mom, who is divorced from my dad. So the conflict at hand came a few days ago when my brother came into the house and posted some small match between the neighboring school. Apparently they won, and my dad was rightfully very proud of him. We had a dinner for him with his favorite foods, and my dad made a comment saying I wish I took a basketball as well since I have the physic for it. I'm a very tall guy. I told him that I do have a sport alike already, and he responded with, well, yeah, but I'm talking about something more like a real sport. After that, I kind of blew up on him, telling him how he's never come to my performances, never had any financial investments in my hobby despite paying my brother hundreds of bucks, or how he never took me seriously, etc. He said that while he loves me and wants to support me, he thinks that my brother can go somewhere with basketball because it's recognized as a sport, while ice skating can't, and that's why it doesn't take it as seriously. I don't know what came over me, but I just got teary-eyed and ran to my room and have barely talked to my dad at all. My brother came in and told me I was overreacting and should apologize to my poor dad, and I think he might be right. 
So Reddit, am I the a-hole for overreacting? Now for the comments. Not a day-hole. It is not about the sport, but about the deliberate invalidation to glorify another. 1. Your father is setting double standards in a way that the scapegoat will never meet and the golden child can effortlessly meet. No matter what you do, he will never be your brother. 2. Your father is using obligation and guilt to make you switch to basketball, a category that you don't like, and where the favorite child will remain unsurpassed. The unfair setup that your dad wants is meant to further reaffirm your current status as the designated loser in the family hierarchy. 3. Your brother, while enjoying the status as the favorite, normalizes your dad's favoritism and minimizes your pain. This is a common pattern in toxic families. I highly recommend the book Toxic Parents, Overcoming Their Hurtful Legacy and Reclaiming Your Life by Susan Forward. If your mother is in the picture, she is aware of the unfair treatment but she is an enabler of toxicity. Edit. People in the comment section seem to be ignoring the importance of if. It is a conditional statement. Only the financial participation of the mother was mentioned in the story. Financial contribution is not everything. It does not equate to participating as a true parent in other aspects of parental responsibilities, particularly setting and teaching healthy boundaries in the family, calling out unfair standards, and toxic behavior slash mentality. It is about awareness and support, even some rich families of toxic parents. There are other types of mistreatment. Giving money does not mean she is in the picture. Being divorced does not mean she is out of the picture. Mom is divorced from dad and fully supports Opie. Otherwise, this comment has it pinned correctly, Opie. You are not day home. Your family dynamic is very messed up. If you can ask your mom for therapy, starting now is good. Ice skating is an Olympic sport. The strength, flexibility, and balance alone makes it worthy. Your dad is obviously a man's man, but that doesn't mean he has to be an unfair and horrible father. You're not an a-hole here by any means. Good luck and maybe we'll see you win gold. Ice skating not being considered a manly man sport astounds me. I mean, it's basically ballet on a slick surface with murder blades strapped on your feet. But yes, throwing balls through hoops is a manlier sport. Not an a-hole. Your father was insensitive. He also is wrong about the athleticism required for ice skating. Former world champion Kurt Browning used to skate with Edmonton Oilers during their practices. He could skate rings around the players, who were shocked by this. But anyone who knows ice skating knows it's not easy. Last story is titled, Would I be the a-hole if I got my little sister's college scholarship revoked? I, 21 male, have been an avid writer my entire life. I have written three full-length novels that I'm almost perpetually reworking, a book of short stories all set within the same universe. I have been working on this universe and the characters within it since I was 13, and it is all very personal to me. This week, I found out that my younger sister, 17 female, won a massive scholarship by submitting one of my short stories. I would have been upset regardless of which story she'd taken, but she happened to pick one based around my experience feeling othered because of my autism. My sister is not autistic and has actually tormented me for my autistic traits in the past. So the fact that this was the story she picked to steal from me almost feels like an attack. In addition to submitting the story, she also had to write about what inspired her to write the piece, and even thinking about what she must have made up makes my blood boil. My parents are currently struggling for money, and this scholarship would pay for almost her entire first year. Both my parents know what my sister did, and they both asked me to just let it slide, because my sister having the scholarship is helping our family out a lot. They were also worried that the school my sister has been accepted to might find out and rescind her admission. They are both using the excuse that she is just a little girl who made a dumb mistake, and that it would be petty and over the top for me, an adult man, to hurt her future over it. I don't want to hurt my parents financially. I don't even really want to hurt my sister. But I don't want her to have this scholarship. I have all the proof that she's not the real author of the story. But would I be the a-hole if I actually sent it in? Should I just let it go for the benefit of my family? I don't want to hurt my parents financially. I don't even really want to hurt my sister. But I don't want her to have this scholarship. Not the a-hole. But you can't have all three of those things at the same time. Make your choice and the consequences will follow. This sucks it happened, but you are going to have to make a choice. 
I would suggest start securing your stories in some way. If they are on a personal computer or flash drive, password protect the files. If they are on paper, move them to the PC and password protect the files. This. Also, OP, it's time to start sending out the story she stole from you for publication. She's proven that it's ready to be published, so publish it and any other work she had access to and make damn sure she doesn't have access to anything more you write. You would not be the a-hole, but understand this decision will likely come with consequences. It will impact your family financials, is likely to get your sister kicked out. Most schools have pretty firm plagiarism policies, and it will absolutely impact your relationship with all of them. Your sister has poor ethics, and she should learn. But you'll likely bear a piece of that cost. Good luck. I would be pretty angry if this situation happened to me. This is something that I would be furious at my sibling for, and it would hurt our relationship a lot. I don't think I would say anything, though. Getting your sibling kicked out of the school she is hoping to attend, and losing a scholarship while your parents are helping pay for school will certainly damage your relationship with your parents. I hope he's completely in the right, but it might be a better idea not to say anything, at least for now. If Hopi decided to try to get their work published, that changes the story. And at that point, Opie should be honest and expose the sibling. She should decline the scholarship. She can say that on further reflection, she has realized many of her words were heavily inspired by her works, and that she cannot accept an award for it. She should absolutely not admit it is actually your work. You should absolutely not admit it is your work unless you are planning to publish this work. Doing either will mean she is thrown out of college and that no others will take her. She should take a gap year to do community college and get her prerequisites out of the way while she saves money to attend next year. Added to Zoed, if you wreck your family to prove a point or she takes a merit award she didn't earn, your parents allow it.